Welcome, brothers and sisters, to today's edition of Anglo History on Course 103, Holy Spirit, who he is and what he does. And we've been going through a detailed study. I think the Lord has just kind of updated this course in one piece, and I trust those who are studying will come into a fuller understanding of his person and his power, what he does in the church. These are all articulated, and the Lord this morning was whispering to me how it is, you know, the standard thing you see today, especially the Pentecostal fold, is a superstar. Everybody comes to, to draw up miracle. He's a solution provider. The Lord says it's better not to be a superstar, a solution provider. It's better to be one the Lord can use to bring many sons to glory. And they empower to know who they are in Him. They empower to walk in their identity. They empower to know their own gifts and callings and walk in it. Heaven regards such people get better than those who try to be superstar and solution provider. Because there's actually one superstar in the kingdom. Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah. There's actually one pro uh, solution provider in the kingdom. And what is happening today is that people are creating, you know, Pentecostal equivalents of their own religious empire. Where they are the Pope. They are the ultimate authority. And they are not empowering people. And people don't know what is in them. And everybody goes from various countries, various cities, various locations to that one provider. It is idolatry in another form. And that's why the Lord is giving this cause. Because Holy Spirit doesn't testify of a man. He testifies of Yeshua. Holy Spirit is given to empower the body to function. And brothers and sisters... Let's pray. Father, we ask you by your spirit, teach us and grant us understanding. Let your name be glorified in Yeshua's name. Amen. The reason why the Alpha Church in Acts of the Apostles was very powerful, very dynamic, is that, you know, the people had an understanding of the role of Holy Spirit. They had what he told them. And moreover, they allowed themselves to obey what Yeshua said. And he said in Matthew 16, 24 to 26, then say Yeshua to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. So they accepted that. And that is why, brothers and sisters, they in a sense were dead men walking. Holy Spirit loves it. He loves to have dead men walking, empty vessels he can use who will not glory in themselves or in the anointing that they will point all the glory to him because there's nothing in them left. And Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Yeshua, nevertheless I live, yet not I, the life I now live in the faith, I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so he walked in the reality that the more you die, the more he shows up through you because there will be nothing of flesh to hinder him again. And that is why it's so important that we understand that the reason why where the gifts are talked about, which we call the sealed gifts, the root gifts, the basic service gifts, where they are in Romans 12, he didn't just start with the gifts. He went on to start with something profound. Romans 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to Elohim, which is your reasonable service, something you thought about, something you contemplated, and you consciously took yourself as laid it at the altar, as a living sacrifice, and be not conformed to this world. There's a way the world thinks. The thinking of the world is self-centered, is selfish and self-centered. The world is about what to get. There are two ways of life. The way of the world is the way of get. The way of the kingdom is the way of give. So that's why Yeshua told Paul and he told the Ephesian Christians in Acts 20, it's more blessed to give than to receive. So that selfish, self-centered life, you say what? You've got to make a reasonable distinction to surrender it. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. If the mind is renewed, then it can think kingdom-wise. 
For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as Elohim has dealt to every man the measure of faith. These three passages, these three verses precede verse 4 to verse 8, where he now talks about those root gifts. Brothers and sisters, it's so important that we understand that the anointing of Holy Ghost is not given for us human beings to make a name for ourselves. No. Number two, it is not given for us to draw people to little pockets and sex that are limited. No. Number three, in other words, the gifts are not given to divide the body. No. They are not given. As you see today, that denomination exclusive, that denomination exclusive, and people don't interact with others because people are built around men and the little part of Elohim they have seen. Rather, spiritual gifts are given to enable each vessel to contribute to the overall health of the church. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 13, I mean to 14, it says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Then he said in verse 11, that all this work the one and the self-same spirit dividing to every man as he will. For as we, as the body is one and have many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Yeshua. You know, for the body is not one member, verse 14, but many. You know, many members empowered to function together. And that's what is the principle of Ephesians 4. Verse 16, you know, that from whom Yeshua, the whole body, joined, fitly joined together and compacted by what every joint supplies. Some of these passages will keep repeating them because the Lord wants us to get the picture. The Lord wants us to know the Holy Spirit is given to activate the body, to function optimally. Yet within the body, we are different people, have different assignments, different roles, and so today we want to talk to you how he speaks to saints. How does he speak to you? It may be different from how he speaks to the other person. You may be born of the same womb. You may be siblings. You may be friends. But he speaks differently. So when we discuss these things, please check out which one does he speak to you and get to understand it. Give it attention. That way he speaks to you until you can truly come to a place where you can say you hear him clearly. When he speaks to you, you know he has spoken. You know that you know, and nobody can shake it out of you. So how does he speak to this many-membered body? There are those he speaks to through audible voice. Clearly, he speaks. They hear him speak. And that audible voice is so clear, they know it. There may be 20 people around, and those 20, 19 don't hear, but you hear him. He can also speak to an inaudible voice in a congregational setting. Like in Acts 13, 1 to 14, Holy Spirit spoke, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I've called them. Acts 13, 1 to 4. So he can speak by audible voice. And when we hear him, we obey promptly. Number two, he can speak through the written word. The written word was inspired by Holy Spirit. He moved on men of old. He moved on them and he inspired them to write. He who is inspired to write is best suited to, to bring forth the rema or the revelation of the word. What did he have in mind? The spirit of the word. It's not just enough to read the word. You can read the word and you don't get the rema. But when you get the rema of the word, you get the revelation of what the Lord has in mind in that word. And that's what's called the spirit of the word. So the written word as you are studying personally, he can speak to you through a particular scripture. And as we're even doing collective study like this one, a rhema can come and you can receive it if he speaks to you through the rhema word. Yeshua called Holy Spirit the spirit of truth in John 15, 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And in John 16, 13, he called him the teacher. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, he shall show you things to come. So he is the one, he is the teacher. And so brothers and sisters, if that's how he speaks to you, what then do we do? The more you study the word, as he said in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto Elohim, the workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The more you study, deliberately intention, not just for preaching to others, the more you take time in his presence, pray, study, pray, you see the word being latched into you. Because as according to 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17, all scripture in verse 16 is given by inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, so that the man of Elohim may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. If you open your heart as you study, the word of the Lord will begin to renew your mind, will begin to enter your heart, you know, transform your heart from glory to glory. Holy Spirit also speaks to a burden of the heart or an impression he lays on the heart about something. And the body comes on you for that thing. And you know that you know that this is not of you. You can't shake it off. Other people cannot speak it off. That body is his voice concerning what he wants you to do. Number four, he can speak through the revelatory gifts. The revelatory gifts are many. It's not one. And so this one, there are many gifts that are, are just born them together as revelatory gifts. They include prophecy, they include word of wisdom, word of knowledge, they include dreams and interpretation of dreams, they include, you know, tongues, and they include interpretation of tongues, they include visions, and discernment of spirits. These are all revelatory gifts. If you have any of them, that's the way the Lord speaks to you. Any of these gifts you have is the way the Lord speaks to you. And man and brother, listen, if you have revelatory gifts, it's easy to go, oh, oh, I can see, I can do, 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 that's fine. But if you have a relative gifts, it's not occasion for boasting. You know what it requires you? Go and die to self. Because it means the Lord will show you things. If you are not dead, those things you see, you misinterpret them. For instance, if your heart is not full of charity, you can misinterpret a revelation of the Lord by the un uncircumcised part of your heart. So the more you are called to revelatory gifts, the more you ask the Lord daily. Paul said, I die daily. Because of the quantum of revelation the Lord was showing to him, I die daily. And it's so important. So the call of Saul in Acts 9, 9 1 to 16, and the call of Peter to the Gentile mission field in Acts 10, the house of Cornelius, it involved revelatory gifts. Vision. Number five, manifestation of gifts of Holy Spirit. Generally, not just revelatory gifts. Any time a spiritual gift manifests, Holy Spirit has spoken there, either as a solution or a direction or whatever. So what we mean is every time Holy Spirit manifests in any way, because we are told in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, that manifestation, what does it mean? The manifestation of the gifts means the showing up of the gifts. So beyond the revelatory gifts, every time the Lord uses you to do a miracle, he has spoken there concerning something, his mercy, his loving kindness, his blessing, whatever it is. And when we know this, we're not going to take, treat spiritual gifts as toys. They are not toys. From 1 Corinthians 12, those gifts include faith, healing, Working on miracles in addition to the ones we talked about, the revelatory gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, include helps and governments. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and Ephesians 4, 11, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the work they do is revelation of Yeshua building his church. That's what we're saying. The sixth way he speaks is called providential steps. Providential steps, you find that from Psalm 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. So providential steps are the ways the Lord orders our steps. At times we don't know it. And it's better if we really understand this concept, so that when he leads you in certain ways that are unusual, not normal, you will know that the Lord is at work. 
It could happen for career, for business, for marriage, you know, anything. You see somebody, you know, you had a very good, you know, clean, honest, holy relationship in primary school or 25 years ago. And at this time of your life, you are thinking what to do. The job is not there. And what to do? And then you go to a mall in a city or into your own city. And who do you run into? That very person. And he says to you, what are you doing? He said, nothing at the moment. He said, uh-uh, what are you talking about? I have this business the Lord has led me to. And look at what about it. And suddenly as he's speaking, something light bulbs go off you. What happened? The Lord ordered your step to meet that person. It could be a marriage also. Somebody you last saw 15 years, 20 years ago, and then suddenly in certain circumstances you see that person, and in the course of conversation, you just discover that this is a divine setup. Providential steps are divine setup, how the Lord sets up. And once we are tender, and we're not too strong, He will order our steps. You know what? The Lord can order your step to your destiny helper. For Esther, the destiny helper was Mordecai. Because of the Esther was orphaned, Mordecai took her in. For, Ban, for, for Saul, his destiny helper was Barnabas, who was there to testify of him. He already had a reputation with the church. For the Ethiopian eunuch, his destiny helper was Philip. Contact with them changed the course of their life. There are people the Lord puts in our life. The way he puts it, we may not know, but the moment, if you can recall, you say, okay, now understand. The Lord orchestrated it providentially. Brothers and sisters, there are times the Lord does very unusual things through this means. For instance, the top heavy Jerusalem church apostles, they were there, you know, staying put. The Lord said to him, go to preach the gospel of the kingdom from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and Thomas, part of the earth. They stayed put. And what happened? Elohim allowed the providential step of persecution. Persecution came upon the church. Now, a man like Philip, who was only fit to serve tables, that persecution caused him to run for his life. He ran, ran from Jerusalem, ran past um, uh, Judea onto Samaria, level three of the assignment. And in Samaria, he opened his mouth, speaking to people, signs and wonders, miracles, healings, deliverance, things happening. And they sent for the elders. They came, laid hands on them. They received Holy Ghost. And as that work was finished, through one man, Philip, the city came to the Lord, ever obedient. He was led to the way of Azotus and there, the Ethiopian eunuch. He met him. So through him, the gospel went to Samaria and not to the most parts of the earth. There are times the Lord is at work. You may not understand it. It may even be painful or difficult, trial, persecution. Listen, in it all, the Lord can bring forth gold. Number seven, one of the ways the Lord speaks is passion or love he plants in our hearts it could be for a job it could be for a particular business it could be for a particular activity or ministry focus he gives you a, a love for that he plants it there others may not see others may not know that is there in you listen love is the dna of elohim and when he plants in you that deep love don't allow anything to take it off even in marriage, you know, today you ask people in some countries, oh, how do you know this person is your spouse? They will tell you all kinds of stories, dream, vision, all that. Not many people can honestly say, you know what, I don't know how, but the Lord planted a deep, pure, holy regard for this vessel. Don't be ashamed. It is one of the ways of knowing the will of the Father. The ministry type, the things you do, the Lord has a way of connecting things. And when he plants a love in you for something or someone or whatever that is pure and holy, nothing defiling, just a regard for the assignment, it is indicative of something. Number eight way he speaks is through answers to prayer. The Lord say, ask, you shall receive, seek, you shall find, knock, it shall be opened unto you. So if you ask and is pure 
asking. It's not selfish, self-centered. It's not based on your belly, but on the overall purpose of the Father, especially if you ask within the framework of um, Matthew 6, 10, a kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If that is at the root of your being and the Lord manifests the answers to those prayers, through answers to prayer, we can know how he is leading. Number nine is brokenness. Brokenness is the state where you no longer rely on your strength, on your knowledge, on your wisdom. And one of the ways the Lord uses people is by allowing them to come to the place of brokenness. Because brokenness changes the dynamics of life. When you are strong, you find that there is always a tendency to do whatever you like. But when you are broken, you find yourself ever dependent on the Lord. And in that dependency, the Lord begins to use you mightily. So he can speak to us through the brokenness he allows us to go through. For Jacob, it was at the brook Jabrok. Jacob who was so crafty, he could make any way for himself. At brook Jabrok, Jacob could no longer rely on his strength. Before him was his brother Esau, whom he had taken his inheritance. Behind him was Laban, who he had also taken his inheritance. So it was between the rock and a hard place, and in that brokenness he held on to the Lord. I won't leave you unless you bless me. For David, his brokenness came after his sin. You know, the David who knew was favored of the Lord, chosen supernatural by the Lord, when he fell that fall, it broke him up. And he cried out in Psalm 51, verse 16, Thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. If it were lamb, I could buy a thousand lambs and slaughter for you. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Oh, Elohim, thou will not despise. So that matter with Bathsheba broke him up and the Lord was able to find in him a more glorious person than before. Brothers and sisters, for Saul, it was the encounter with Yeshua, the road to Damascus to go and persecute the church. He encountered him. The brokenness, he was blind. Do you know, brothers and sisters, this is so interesting. Many Christians don't relate things. Do you know that Saul never really fully recovered from that side issue? Because if you see where the, the letter he was writing to some of the churches, he wrote to one and said, you know what? I know if it were possible, you have taken your own eyes and given to me to transplant to my own. He had an eye problem. He had an eye problem most of his life. It was part of that brokenness of that first encounter with Yeshua on the road to Damascus. For Peter, you know, Peter was cocksure. I would never, I know, if ever, 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 ever run away, deny you, not me. What happened? When he denied him three times, he cried like a baby. Brokenness. There are times the Lord orchestrates certain things to allow us to see our weakness, to allow us to see in our belief. Remember what Paul said. Paul, you know, great man, mighty use, even was inducted to heaven to see the third heaven. The glory was so much, he couldn't even write about it. It was not permitted. But you know what the Lord did? Lest this abundance of revelation begin to become an issue and maybe pride come, the Lord allowed a message of Satan. So we don't know whether it is continuation of that eye issue he had, that blindness he had. Now allow it to come so that he will not rely on his natural eyes, but will rely on spiritual strength. You know what? That messenger of Satan came. Paul asked the Lord. Paul, a man who was so mightily anointed, the handkerchiefs were taken from his body. A man who could shake off venomous snakes that beat him. He shake them off. Nothing happened to him. He cried to the Lord, Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. What the Lord said to him? So, your problem is not this issue. Your need is my grace. So there are times the Lord allows things to happen to make us dependent on him. To make us more humble. To make us more broken more empty, so he can then use us, and we're not going to boast in the abundance of what he's giving to us. And this happens generally, brothers and sisters. And it's so important that we know that when you are going through such issues, please know that the Lord is at work. He's speaking. Then no matter how he speaks to you, all these things we've talked about and many more, 
and there are so many ways he speaks to you that is not listed in the things we've discussed. No matter how he speaks to you, we encourage you as the Lord led us over the years to adopt three benchmarks to know whether it is it him. So don't just say, I heard from him, run off. Use three benchmarks. Number one is righteousness or right standing with the Lord. Do you, it's found in Romans chapter 14, 17 to 18. Do you have a sense of right standing with the Lord over that matter? That project you believe he wants you to do, he's, he's spoken to you. Is there right standing? Do you feel right with the Lord or do you feel violated? That person said the Lord wants you to marry. When you remember, do you have a sense of right standing or do, what comes into you? Are they sinful thoughts? If it's sinful thoughts, it's not the Lord. If it is sinful thoughts, lustful thoughts, it is not the Lord. But if it's the sense of right standing concerning that thing you say he wants to do, that's okay. That's one mark up. Two is peace. Yeshua told them in John 14, 27 and John 16, 33, peace is one of the ways, one things he left for his church on earth. In the world, tribulation in him, peace. And Philippians 4, 7 is that peace of Elohim, which passes all understanding, shall keep our hearts and minds to Yeshua. So if you want to do anything, you believe the Lord is leading you, Holy Spirit is speaking to you, if, he's, if there is peace in your heart, profound peace, no ruffling, it means it is Him. If that first one, right standing, second one, peace, there's a green light there. Then the third one is joy in the Holy Ghost. According to that, Romans 14, 17 and 18, joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy is not the same as happiness. Happiness is a result of External happiness, you get more money, you feel happy, you get a new job, you feel happy. But joy is a fruit of the Spirit and evidence of what the Spirit of the Lord is in and where He wants to lead you. So the Bible says in Isaiah 12, 3, Therefore with joy shall you draw from the wells of salvation. And then in Nehemiah 8, 10, the B part, it says, the B part of it says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you say the Lord is leading to something and there's a sense of right standing, the sense of, you know, there's this peace, profound peace, the passing of understanding, and then three, there's this joy of the Holy Spirit in you, a fruit of His, of his presence. These three things shows a green light. If it is two, you can wait and pray for that. If there's only one or none, don't go that way. It's not Him. That thing you said is Him. It's not him. And brothers and sisters, we know to know that the Lord loves us. He says he will never leave us or forsake us in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. So that is why the Lord wants us to have a situation where our minds are stayed on him. That will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. And then we also know in Isaiah 40, verse 30, even the youths shall be weak shall be shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run they shall not be weary they shall walk they shall not faint if you wait on the lord you spend quality time on the lord you don't rush into the day where you know without having time with him and when you meet situations you don't rush into but you wait to hear from him brothers and sisters you will never go wrong the Lord will lead you. The Lord will guide you. So, having said this, we need to know, again, what I started at the beginning. The role of the death of self is so critical. As long as self is alive, it will hinder you from hearing from the Lord clearly. If the self is alive, it will become a filter. Even when the Lord is saying something, self will misinterpret it. Because self is selfish, it will misinterpret it and you won't be able to see. Listen to this. Holy Spirit can never lead you to hate. He can never lead you to unforgiveness. He can never lead you to withhold good from those it is due. He can never lead us in certain ways that are clearly stated in the Bible. He will lead you to all truths. That's why it's not enough to say, the Lord is leading me. What is he leading you into? So, if we die to self, like Paul said, to me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Come to that place where we realize that every single moment, 
Every single day, the Lord gives to us is for his purpose. Listen, the encounter I had 2004, it, you know, I know, okay, one love the Lord, all that. But from 2004, the Lord made it clear to me that not one inch of my life was a gain for myself. It was not for him, totally. And that was, that's not the day I was born again. Made consecrations, you know. Be sanctified, love him, passionately love people radically. All that anointed with many work done in his name by him through this vessel. But when my life was totally at the place where you can say, right off, doctors say no more. And Holy Spirit gave me a word to tell the doctor, I'll be okay. When I go home and meet my wife, I'll be okay. And the Lord did it. And the Lord made it clear to me that there were things. The reason why I didn't go is that as he enabled me to speak to Satan that time, say, so Satan, you can't take me out because the reason for which the Lord called me, part of which I had already known by 1996, when he pulled me out of denomination for his purpose, for the kingdom purpose, Satan, you can't take me out because it's not been done yet. That word spoken. The Lord later reminded me of it several times. And brothers and sisters, it led to a radical consecration that puts the Lord far above this life, my family, everything, the Lord preeminently so. It wasn't in that degree before 2004. And from then, the Lord has showed me what it means. So I want to say this to you. The reason why many saints are not being used of the Lord is that they are not giving up their life. He said, if you love it, you hold it. But if you give it up, then I can use you because Holy Spirit wants to use us to the degree. For instance, the assignment we do now is to the Lord to raise many sons for glory across the world, all the continents simultaneously. And we are meeting all kinds of people. Some places will go crafty people. All they are looking for is money. Nothing more. And yet you have to love them. Be here with them. All they are looking for is money. 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 Nothing more. They don't want to hear the word. You give them the word. They look like they are hearing. No. Money. A place you go to. People are looking at position. Title. All that. How did that? We believe the Lord for a remnant. And from time to time, the Lord shows a remnant in that land, in that place. The Lord brings forth a remnant. You know, brothers and sisters, it's just like what is happening. A lot, a lot of people want international missiles fellowship, the network, so that they can meet people, connect, network, expand their contacts and all that. They don't want the teaching ministry that will make them to be able to be better citizens of the kingdom and network better without selfishness. No, they don't want it. They can't stand 20, uh, 40 minutes of the teaching that goes on every day. We know all that, yet we have to love. Okay, brothers and sisters, listen, the more we die, the more he can use us. Then the other, other thing is the role of lively conscience. If the Lord will use us, we must come to the place where our conscience is sharp, very much alive, so that he can speak and we're not going to uh, we're not going to snuff him out if the conscience is not lively a situation may arise where the Lord can speak and we go our way we do what we want and in doing what we want that may lead to a situation where his voice will not carry weight so that's why we need a, we may need a fresh touch all of us who are here today we may need a fresh touch the Lord wants to use us brothers and sisters he wants us to come to the place. He can testify of us like he testified of Timothy. Paul the Apostle, writing in Philippians chapter 2, 19 to 21. But I trust in the Lord Yeshua to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all men seek their glory, not the things which are Yeshua's. People seek their glory, not the things which are Yeshua's. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to come to that place where we can, he can testify of us that we are not seeking our glory. We are seeking his kingdom. We do his work. 
because it's in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Not saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The Lord wants us to bring us to a place where everything he does to us is not by our mind, it's not by our power, it's not by our wisdom, it's by his spirit passing through our vessels to show up. And all the glory goes to him. And his kingdom is built, is established. And the funny thing, the most dangerous thing is there are people who, they come to a place in their zeal and commitment to the Lord, sold out after some time. Oh, they want to marry. The first victim is the work of the Lord. They are married. They now want children. The first victim is the work of the Lord. Lord, let me just have the children. Then we can do your work. Or the Lord gives them a husband, wife, children. Somehow, before you know it, their first love is now the children. How to train them to become who they want. And before you know it, there's a shift. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is looking for people who are sold out sold out totally. They are foolish in the eyes of the world, but in heaven, they are great esteem. They are like Yeshua. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. First sisters, that's the kind of people the Lord is looking for. I believe you may be one of them, but it all depends on you. What are you doing with all these teachings? What are you doing with them? Do you take time to study the, the text? After the talking, at times I can only give summary of two texts of it. Can you go? Do you have time to go to the text to go and look at them, to study them? The Lord loves you. He wants to use you. By way of assignment, please summarize this lesson. Give us a short summary. Two, kindly list the various ways Holy Spirit speaks to you as a person. What are the ways He speaks to you? Three, what are the three benchmarks to confirm if indeed he is the one speaking to you. What are the three benchmarks? I want to ask you, do you really need me to tell you to share if truly you are being blessed? Share with people you know. Share with your friends, family members, others. Share the video with them and let people you know know that we are moving to a time. The master class will start in a few days' time. Today is 24 February. Eight, four more days. The month ends Sunday. Monday, March 1, we begin the 2022 Masterclass. Go to the website www.kingdombusclub.com and tell your friends, forward the link to them on your own, compose a little message. If you have gone through the Masterclass, if you have not gone through, register. If you have gone through, tell them and let them know that it is good for them. And by the grace of the Lord, they can all be trained because the Lord is raising an army. The old ways of the Pentecostal revivals have been found deficient. This now the Lord wants to raise an army who he teaches, who he trains, who he equips, who he activates and releases all over the world. That army cannot be stopped. No government can stop it. No legislation can stop it. No culture war can stop it. That army is not found with partisan politics. It has only one thing it knows, the kingdom. And Yeshua HaMashiach, the head of the kingdom, sold out to him. He uses them. And the Lord wants to bless you with that revelation. And for, if you are part of this commission, you know, I want to encourage you also every day, look up www.assuringgrace.org where Pastor Grace is ministering with other people in a beautiful blog that you can receive daily daily you know two three minutes uh, message you can read and then the story of her uh, walk with the lord her memorial on the encounters she had with the lord those are encounters that truly are moving you can go there and download that book his glory goes with us we love you i will say tomorrow we're going to have two sessions just if the Lord tarries, these two sessions will also help us to have deeper understanding of these things. That by the time we finish on Friday, we deliberately will finish on Friday, so that Monday we can, on Sunday we can prepare you for what will happen the next day, which is Monday. Let us pray, Father in heaven. Behold your servants. Do with them what you have already proposed before the foundation of this world. Lord, have your way. 
We lift up the name of the Lord Yeshua Hamashu over the earth rim. We pray, Lord, that you will raise for yourself sons all over the world, from all tribes and all cultures. And Lord, do this work that you will unleash them across the world in signs and wonders and miracles and all dimensions of manifestation of your grace that at the end of the day, all honor and glory will go to you alone. Lord, we lift up everyone who is part of your kingdom, who is going through trauma in any shape or form. We speak life into them. We speak health. We speak strength. We declare healing and deliverance and that your name will be honored and glorified do what only you can do. And those who are in extreme weather situations, Lord, come through for them and deliver them. We bless you, Father. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.